What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about the Python package called Benedict which is an advanced dictionary with a lot of capabilities so let us get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the command line and we're going to install the package. So we're going to type pip or pip3 depending on your installation. And we're going to install using quotation marks here the package called python benedict and then in square brackets we're going to type all. This means we're going to install all the functionality of the package because this package supports different uh, formats, XML, JSON, HTML, uh, pickle files and stuff like that. So to just get all the functionality we install it like this. And once you have it installed, you can go into your script and you can say from Benedict import Benedict. And a Benedict dictionary is basically an advanced dictionary or how people like to call it sometimes dictionary on steroids. So it's basically, uh, it can basically do everything a normal Python dictionary can do, but it also has some additional capabilities. And I'm just going to go through some examples in this video here. So let's start with a normal dictionary, which is just going to have the following structure. We're going to have a key A, which points to a dictionary where we have a key B, which points to a dictionary where we have a key C, and this points to a value 10, for example. Now, one thing that you can do with Benedict is different ways of accessing this value. So with a normal dictionary, what you do is you say, I want to have the key value pair A, I want to have the key value pair B, and I want to have the key value pair C inside of all this. And then you get basically the value 10. What you can do with Benedict, for example, is you can just specify this with a path notation with a dot. So you can say that your special dictionary is now going to be the Benedict version of the normal dictionary. You can just do it like that. Or you can just specify this here directly in the brackets. Um, and then first of all, if you just print it, you're gonna get the same result that you get with the ordinary dictionary. But now instead of having to specify it like this, even though this is also possible, I can just say A, B, C like this. And then I'm gonna get the same result. This is not possible with a normal dictionary. So if I comment this out and I just say normal dictionary here, it's going to tell me that there is no attribute A. So that is one convenient thing that you can do uh, with Benedict. But this also goes for uh, creating paths like this. Now, by default, you cannot do it with the dot notation. I'm going to, uh, to talk about this here in a second again. Uh, but what you can do is you can say special dictionary and you can use these square brackets here with a couple of keys. So I can say X, Y and Z. And basically, I can set a value there 20, for example. And then when I print a special dictionary, you can see that I actually created this structure inside of the existing dictionary. If I do the same thing with the normal dictionary, it's not going to give me an exception, but it's going to consider this to be a tuple or a triple in this case. So it's going to create this as one key and then this is going to be the value. So if I change this to normal dictionary and I print this down here, you're going to see that this is now a tuple and it points to the value 20. So it's not a path really. Now, what we can also do is maybe I can get rid of this here, I can create a special dictionary out of nothing. So I can say special dictionary is equal to Benedict. And I can also set the, the option here, which is key attribute dynamic, and I can set this to true. And what this allows me to do is I can just say special dict A, B, C, D, E, F, for example, equals 100. And I don't have to create these fields, I can just automatically do it like this. So I don't have to make sure that A exists in order to be able to create B in it, I can just use this notation right away if this keyword is set to true, which is also convenient, you cannot do that with a normal Python dictionary, you have to use Benedict with this option enabled. Um, yeah, so that's one thing. What else can we do? We can also use different file formats. So here I have prepared a bunch of uh, basic JSON, CSV, XML files. I prepared them because there's no value in coding this out uh, during during the video. So basically the CSV file is just a table, three people, three names, three ages. And then we have here also the same in JSON and we have the same in XML format. And Benedict can parse all this into a dictionary very easily. So we can print here, for example, Benedict from CSV. And this is why we installed all the functionality. Otherwise, it would tell you the CSV module is not installed. Uh, I can just say data.csv, for example. And then I will get um, 
this as a dictionary from the CSV file. And it's going to look slightly different uh, when I do it from the from the data JSON and the data XML file because they have different structures, obviously. So you're going to see the difference here in a second from JSON, from, where is it, XML. Um, you can see that it, it looks different um, because I have here employees and employee and then I have the fields and here I have just employees and here I have just a table. So we have different representations, but you can see how easy it is to just load files and have them as a Benedict dictionary right away. Um, and the same goes also for export. Of course, for exporting, the format needs to be uh, appropriate. So you cannot just export whatever you want. If you have multiple root elements, for example, you cannot export as XML. We can try here if I'm able to just take the special dictionary and say to, to XML, basically, I hope this works. Uh, of course, I need to print that because that, of course, does not create a file. I don't have a file type. But yeah, there you go. This is now an XML. Um, and yeah, basically this creates now the XML file and I can write this into a file by saying with open and so on in writing mode and I can just print this or write this into a text file, which would create an XML file, of course. Um, so yeah, one also very interesting thing that I want to show you here um, is that you can do a lot of things with, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to show all the functionality here, you can refer to the documentation for that. But I want to show you two things that you can do easily with dictionaries with Benedict dictionaries that you cannot do easily with normal dictionaries. And I think this is a very powerful thing. So let's say I have here um, a test dictionary. Let's say I have the key A pointing to the value 10, I have the key B pointing to the value 20. Uh, I have the key C pointing to the value 30. And then I want to filter now. And let's say this is a huge dictionary in reality. Uh, and of course, this is not an ordinary dictionary. It's a Benedict dictionary. So it has the functionality. What I can do now very easily is I can filter. So I can say test dot filter. And I can specify a lambda expression that takes a key value pair as input and decides on what to give me here. So for example, I can say the value has to be above 25 to be shown. And then I only get C30 because that's the only thing where the value is above 25. And I can, of course, also combine that with or it's less than 15. So we're excluding 20, basically, and we can get a filtering result here. So that is something very convenient. Otherwise, you would have to do that with dictionary comprehensions, uh, which is kind of tedious oftentimes. Uh, but even more powerful than that um, is and I'm going to copy this here now from my prepared code because I don't want to type it out again. Um, what's more useful is if you have, for example, something like this, it's a simple dictionary here, we have the data dictionary, uh, which has a people key and this people key has a list of dictionaries themselves uh, or itself. And then we have these dictionaries having name and country code uh, key value pairs. So we have people list and then each dictionary represents one person. Uh, now we can turn that into a Benedict dictionary easily. And now what we can do is we can group by so I can say print D group by and I can group by the key P or I, I can use um, people here I refer to people which is a list of dictionaries. This is important, whatever you pass here as the key needs to be a list of dictionaries. And then you want to say, okay, by which key do you want to filter or group. And in our case, we're going to group by country code. And what this is going to result in is a dictionary where you have the country code, and then everything that belongs to that country code. So you can see, we have Alice and Bob being from the United States. And because of that, we have the key United States now having two elements in here, which are Alice and, jo uh, and Bob's uh, dictionaries. And then we have the same for Mexico here because we have uh, Carlos and uh, Daniela. Um, and because of that, we have now two uh, elements here as well. And then we have also the last one, which is only one. Yeah, basically that. Uh, by the way, these names were generated by ChatGPT. So yeah, <laughs> uh, the whole data here was generated by ChatGPT. But this is an example. I had this um, quite often when I was coding that I had a dictionary, not a Panos data frame, not something that uh, I can easily filter, I basically just have a dictionary and I want to group by I want to filter and all I every time I had to either convert it to pandas to work with it, or I had to use some dictionary comprehension. This is way more convenient. 
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.